In moments of crisis involving the safety of our native land, the American people have invariably rallied against the danger with courage, faith, and resolution. On the battlefield and on the home front, men and women are daily making great sacrifices so that freedom and our way of life may be preserved. Women are needed increasingly as workers in armament plants, and the problem arises should women be drafted to replace men in the war effort. The book, Women in the Wild Blue, is a tribute to the wasps, heroic young women who flew military aircraft during World War II. It is not likely many have heard of the women Air Force service pilots who ferried aircraft from factory to air base and towed targets for anti-aircraft gunnery training nor of their 33-year struggle to be recognized as military veterans. Our nation's history seems to have all but forgotten what they did. Recruits for the Women's Auxiliary Ferry Squadron report for training at Wilmington, Delaware. Licensed civilian pilots, they will ferry warplanes from factories to airfields, signing up as WAFs. Going for their tryout with military planes. Not in the Army, they're a civilian group. Number limited to 50. And hardly more than 200 women in the country could qualify, so strict are the requirements. Their director is Mrs. Nancy Harkness Love, who now shows the WAFs how to handle a military training plane. Two women played key roles in the search for a solution to the Air Force's problem. Jacqueline Cochran was committed to bringing women pilots into the Air Force on a broad scale. Jackie proposed that the Air Force should bring in women with private licenses and only 35 logged hours of flying time. Fewer credentials than Love's women, but nonetheless very capable pilots. Of the 1,830 women who entered the program, 1,074 ultimately earned their wings. 50 of the women were assigned to duties at Camp Davis, North Carolina. Piloted by a wasp, speeds along and releases and tows a sleeve target for the sharp shooting gunners. Target riddled, a good score for the gunners. They didn't quite know what to do with us when we got to Camp Davis. At first we were housed with the nurses and then moved to the WAC barracks. We first checked out in little two-place cubs and Stenson liaison airplanes, then larger ones. Eventually, we had our own barracks. I hung around the flight line to try to get checked out on various airplanes. It was there that I first saw the radio-controlled airplanes and got interested in them. The radio-controlled drone program at Camp Davis was experimental and classified as secret. Although rudimentary by today's standards, the groundwork laid by the WASPs was an essential step in developing today's remote-controlled aircraft. Finally, in 1977, Congress voted to recognize the WASPs as veterans and awarded them veteran status from the United States Air Force. Being militarized meant that they could at last receive an honorable military discharge and be considered veterans with all associated benefits. If I die violently, who can say it was before my time? I want no one to grieve for me. I was happiest in the sky. At dawn, when the quietness of the air was like a caress, when this noon sun beat down, and at dusk when the sky was drenched with the fading light, think of me there and remember me, I hope, as I shall you. <laughs> 